Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be focusing on the recursive version of the Merge Sword. If you're new here, my name is Teresa. I'm a software engineer and on this channel, I post coding tutorials like this one as well as some casual daily life vlogs. Let's begin. So what is a Merge Sword? If you've heard of a Merge Sword before, you've probably heard of the word divide and conquer, and that is exactly the idea of the Merge Sword. It's kind of to split the array into half, sort each half, and then merge it back together. There's actually two ways to implement this. The first is the recursive way, which is what we'll be discussing in this video, and the iterative way. The recursive solution is going to be a top-down approach where we're going to start from the entire array, break it down into smaller ones, and then sort them. While the iterative solution is a bottom-up approach where we start from the smallest subarray and then merge it up to the full-length array. So what do we have to do? First, we split the array into half, then we sort each half, and then we merge the two halves together. Simple, right? But how do we actually sort the two half? We can do this by simply do a merge sort on each half. So from here, let's try writing this in actual pseudocode. To split the array into half, we're going to simply do this by finding the middle index. Then we merge sort the left part. And then we merge sort the right part. And then we merge the two halves together. To merge them, we're going to loop through both arrays and put the smaller element into the array first. For example, if we are going to merge the array 1, 3 and the array 2, 4, 5, we will start comparing 1 and 2. And then we put 1 first because 1 is smaller. Then we move on to compare 3 and 2. And then we put 2 after 1 because 2 is smaller than 3. Then we compare 3 and 4 to put 3 after 2. Now there's no more elements to compare 4 and 5 with, so we're just going to add the rest of the array to the merged one and create 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now let's try coding this up in Python. I'll first have a function called sort that will take in an array r, the lower bound low, and the higher bound high. We can actually just make the array take in one variable r, but the preferable way is to sort it in place so that the program will actually use less memory and to do that, we need to take in at least three variables. Now, let's get the middle of the array, and we're going to find the mid value by doing low plus high minus low and divided by two. And I'm using a double slash here to make sure that the number is converted to an integer and not a decimal. If you're using other languages like Java, you don't need to worry about this. Then we merge sort each part by calling itself and pass in the current array, the current low, and the mid for the left half. Then to sort the second half, we pass in the current array, mid plus one as low, and then the current high. Once each half is sorted, we're going to merge them. Instead of doing it in this function, I'm just going to create another function called merge to merge the two arrays. And it's going to take in an array, a low, a mid, and a high. Now here's the fun part, the longest part of this algorithm I would say. Because we're doing this in place, we need to create a copy of the array that is going to be sorted first, or else it might override each other and mess up everything. We don't need to copy the entire array though. We just need the first half of the subarray that we're going to merge because that's the part that's going to get override first. We can do this by creating a temporary variable that is going to be set to the array from low to mid plus one. And this will give us the left section of this pair. Now we need to have a few variables that will keep track of the position in the arrays. We're going to set i equals to zero, j to mid plus 1, and k to low. The i here is going to be used to index the left half, j is for the right half, and k for the part that we're sorting. Now we want to loop through the entire array until the end of either half. Therefore, the condition is going to be while i is less than the length of temp, and j is less than or equals to high. 
it, this means that the loop will break when either one of the condition turns false. Then inside this loop, we compare them. If temp at i is less than or equals to array at j, we're going to set array at k equals to temp at i. Then we're going to increment both i and k by 1. Else, if the condition is false, it means that array at j is smaller. So we're going to set array at k to array at j, then we increment both j and k by 1. Now, after this loop is over, there's a possibility that there are still elements left inside of temp array. So we're going to copy the rest of the element inside of temp to the array by doing the exact same thing as we did up here. We don't need to care about the elements that are left in the second half because it's already there. Don't forget that we're doing this in place, so it is already there and it is already sorted. Now, don't forget that this is a recursive version, so we need a base case to actually tell the loop to stop. So, in this case, the base case is going to be when the size of the array is equals to zero. We can do this by using the high and the low. So, if high minus low is less than one, we want to return. And that is all for the recursive version. Let's test this out. And there you go, a sorted array. For the merge sort, the time complexity for the best case and the worst case is O and lock in. If you want me to explain why it is in lock in, please comment down below because explaining that alone can actually be another video in itself. And yeah, that is all for me today. If you like this video, check out the playlist of algorithms that I've created. And spoiler alert, next week's video is going to be a merge sort, but the iterative version. So if you're looking for that, subscribe to my channel, stay tuned, and see you again next week. Bye!